Hi, I'm Michelle Chalfant, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfont. Happy to be here with you today on this podcast number 280. Yes, indeed. I'm chatting with you today about how to help children live in their adult chairs. And by the way, not just children, but even kids that are older. What if we have adult children? Can we even help them? I'm going to answer all of these questions for you today. One thing I want to say to you, though, is you cannot help your children, no matter what age they are, unless you're practicing self-care, because that's what healthy adults do. That's what we do in the adult chair. So if you're not practicing self-care, please come join us in the membership this month. I am spending the whole month with you on self-care. In fact, I called it, (laughs) this is what I called it for this month. I'm a self-care badass because we need to be self-care badasses if we're going to live as healthy adults. You've missed nothing. I have recorded everything. We still have live events coming. So come join us at theadultchair.com forward slash membership. I would love to have you join us. Okay. Let's chit chat about this. So I get this question. This is this today's podcast is based on a lot of listeners that have emailed in about these two important questions. Number one, am I able to help my children live in their adult chair? What can I do as a parent to ensure that my child gets their butt in their adult chair by the time they're 25 years old? I'm going to give you some ideas on how to make that happen. The other question that we get a lot is, what if my kids are older? You know, can I still help them to find their adult chair? And I'm going to say the answer is yes to that as well. But first and foremost, I think what we need to do is go over what does it look like to live in the adult chair, which by the way, is the healthiest version of ourselves. And I want you to think about the adult chair as really a touchstone for emotionally healthy living. Okay. Think of it as a touchstone. So there are days, moments throughout my day where I'm like, oops, I'm not there, but I know where I need to go. So having the awareness, awareness is a quality of the adult chair. When I'm aware that I'm not in my adult and that I might've slipped and not, I'm, I'm in the adolescent chair. It's okay. It's actually okay. Awareness is key. So let's go ahead and review first. What are some of the qualities, just some I'm going to go over with you right now. What are some of the qualities for living in our adult chair? So in order to be healthy, or let me say it like this, healthy people live with fact and truth versus stories and assumptions. So this means that if we don't know something for sure, we're going to find out what's 100% true before we take action or speak up about it. So I want you guys to understand making up a story and assumption is something that most humans do very, very quickly, very quickly. We drift right into story, even when we don't know what's true. And what's crazy is when we then find out what's true, when we compare it to the story that we made up about something, I can't, I wish I could remember where I read the stat. 97% of the time, we're incorrect with our stories. 97. That's a lot. So whenever you go into a story and an assumption, I want you to say to yourself, wait a minute, let me go find out what's 100% fact and truth here because I just don't know. I think so-and-so is mad at me 
And I think they're mad at me for all these reasons. So instead of guessing, you go to that person and you ask, this in fact just happened to me like a week or so ago. I actually had two of my friends on the phone, we were chatting. And one of them toward the end of the conversation got really short, started like not answering, you know, her, 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 her tone got sharp. And I'm like, hmm, she seems upset about something. And before I know it, boom, she's like, all right, I got to go. Goodbye. And she hung up on us. But I said to myself, wait a minute, did I say something wrong? And then I found myself sitting there, like kind of going through our conversation. Guess what I was doing? trying to come up with a story that made sense to me and why she got so sharp at the very end of our conversation. So I jumped in my adult chair and I called her back within a few minutes of hanging up because I'm like, I'm, I can't go through these stories all day and try to figure it out because I honestly don't know. I'm not in her body. I'm not in her mind. I don't know what she's thinking. I don't know why she suddenly got upset. I can guess, but I can't even guess because I don't know what if I did something wrong or She was mad at something else. So I called her. She did not call me back until the next day. So throughout the day, it did drift into my mind a couple of times. And every time it drifted in where I was trying to analyze or figure out what I might have done wrong or if my other friend did something wrong, I would say to myself, and this is what a healthy adult would do. I said to myself, wait, I don't know what's fact and truth. I'll reach out to her again to get that fact and truth about why she was upset. So anyway... The next day she called me and she was actually fine. She wasn't upset. And I said to her, Hey, yesterday when we were hanging up on the phone or toward the end of our conversation, you seemed like you got upset about something. Was it something that I said or what happened? I'm just wanting to get information and clarity because I didn't know what happened to you. And she said, well, yeah, I really didn't like when you said such and such. And I said, well, what did that mean to you when I said that? And she says, well, it just seemed like you were being a little bit careless or not nice or something. And I said, actually, the reason I said that was because I cared about you and I was trying to make sure that your needs were taken care of. And she says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. She said, I heard it in a completely different way. I said to her, so you made up a story that wasn't true. And she said, I did. And I said, well, next time, please ask me what's true. I said, I love you and I would never want to hurt you. So let's start using that language with each other. I'd love to use this language where, hey, I'm making up a story that this is true. Is that what you're trying to say? And she said, I'd love to do that with you. So it was a really beautiful adult conversation, really beautiful. That's what healthy adults would do. And you'll find the more you give people the verbiage for what a healthy adult would do. And use exactly what I just did with my friend. They're very willing, especially if they care about you, they're very willing to do that with you. Like, oh yeah, I like that language. They don't, they may not know this model at all. And and most of us, again, we, you know, it's not that we were all raised in terrible childhoods. Some of us were, no doubt about it. But other people were raised in childhoods where they were loved, but they didn't get good life skills like this. They didn't get emotional skills. How do you have healthy relationships? We're not great at it as humans in general. So that's what the show is all about. But today is really important because I'm going to talk to you about this. What does a healthy adult look like? What does it even look like? So a healthy adult looks for facts, looks for truth. They stay away from story and assumption because again, most of the time we're incorrect with our stories and assumptions. Okay. Number two, when we are in our our adult chair or we're in the healthiest version of ourselves, our healthiest adult self, we speak up for ourselves and we set boundaries. Just like I did above in that example I just gave you. I sat there and I'm like, it was festering inside of me because I I really care for this girl. And I thought, I don't don't like what's going on here. I don't like that she's upset with me. I want to get to the bottom of it. That's what healthy adults do. We don't ignore We don't sweep it under the carpet like it never happened. We actually talk about it. I wasn't angry when I talked about it. I wasn't raging. I wasn't blaming. I didn't say things like, I spent all day and you should have called me back yesterday. I did none of that. That's all adolescent chair stuff. I did say, let's do this from now on. This is how I felt. This is what was true. And we moved on and it was lovely. 
healthy. That's what healthy people do. Okay. All right. Number three, another thing that healthy people do is we respond versus react. So healthy adults respond to people and don't blow up and react when we're triggered. Okay. We are mindful that we're being triggered. And then we say like, things to ourselves like, okay, wait, I'm being triggered. I don't want to say anything right now because I'm going to say, I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm going to hurt somebody. Let me take a moment and get clear and get settled within myself, get centered within myself. And then I'll speak up. I'll respond. A reaction, remember, is quick. It's like a knee jerk reaction. Something happens to me. Boom. I'm right back at you. I'm yelling. I'm angry. I'm screaming. I'm hysterical. I'm blaming. I am shaming. I am doing all of those things. All of that's from the adolescent chair. It's all an egoic reaction. Instead of, let me take a moment. Let me back away from this. Let me pause and let me get my truth. Let me get fact and truth and clarity. And then I'll share what's going on. That's a response versus a reaction. Okay. Number four, healthy adults feel their emotions. We feel our emotions. We seek to know what we're feeling. And then we get curious about what's going on inside. If we don't know exactly what we're feeling, we get curious and we'll say, I wonder what's going on. I wonder what I'm feeling. I wonder what just happened. Why am I feeling so scared? Why am I feeling so angry? What just happened there? Let me take a moment and be with it. That's what healthy adults do. Number five, healthy adults witness their thoughts and we don't buy into everything that we hear that's going through our minds. Okay, 70 to 90,000 thoughts go through our heads every day. Can you believe it? We don't need to believe everything. (laughs) Sometimes we have blaming parts. Sometimes we have shaming parts. Sometimes we have parts that want to blame other people. Again, we live with truth, when we are healthy, we witness our thoughts. We say to ourselves, isn't that silly? I'm having that thought that's telling me I'm a terrible mom or I'm a terrible person, or I'm going to get fired. There's no evidence of that. There's no truth. That's a story. So I don't buy into everything that I think I'm going to sit with it and find truth. Number six, we take responsibility for our part in something if we need to. Now, remember, we don't take too much responsibility, but we do take responsibility for our part. So we don't blow it off. Again, we don't sweep things under the carpet. We own it. We take ownership. Hey, and here's number seven. We apologize when we've done something to hurt another person. We say to ourselves, hey, I am so sorry. I think I might have hurt you. Can we talk about this? Healthy. Okay. So we take responsibility for our part. We don't pretend like nothing happened when it did. I think most people are are generally nice people, but sometimes, you know what? We make mistakes. That's called being human. It's okay. So take responsibility and go, oops, I slipped up. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I don't know where that came from. I'm so sorry. I said that to you and I hurt your feelings. I'm so sorry. That I have to tell you, feels so good. Not just saying it, but receiving it. It stops a fight. It stops a disagreement or an argument. It's like, you're right. I did that. And I mean, when we own it and we apologize, you got to be fully in your body. Your energy is fully in your body. And when you own it, holy moly, it's incredible. It's a game changer. Number eight, we live with presence and reach for consciousness when possible. You know, when we live in past and future, we're not present. We're not being conscious. Again, we're trying to backpedal or make up a story about something or sweep something under the carpet, that kind of thing. But we reach for consciousness and awareness of things. Again, what's my part in this? This is all being in our adult chair. This is all being a healthy adult. So these are eight of our, there are many adult chair qualities, but this is a healthy adult. So these are things that you want to show up in and do when you're with your child. So I want to go over some ideas of as a parent, what you can do for your child. This is number one, you model for them what it looks like to be healthy. 
How in the world are they going to learn? You don't have to sit down and give them the eight keys to being a healthy adult in your adult chair. You just live it. I don't care how old your kids are. I don't care if they're babies. I don't care if they're, again, I don't care how old they are. Start today. Start today to own your reality. Start today to apologize. Start today to live with fact and truth, to set boundaries. You know, my mother just turned, I shouldn't say this, she'd kill me. I'm just going to say she's in her 70s. (laughs) Beyond the mid mark of 70, she would die if she knew I was saying this. And let me just say, she works on herself. It is so beautiful. And my sister and I, I mean, we sit and look at her. We're like, she is freaking amazing. Look at this woman working on her boundaries, working on herself. We watch it and we love it. I'm so proud of her. So do the same. So whether you have a toddler or you have an adult child, start today because your kids are always going to be looking at you and there's always a chance to respect you and grow and learn from you. So please model for your kids what healthy looks like. Number two, we want to let our children feel their pain and their emotions because something that healthy adults do is that we feel our emotions. When you raise a child and you don't allow them to have anything but happiness or really no emotions, a lot of families just have very flat emotional or I should, how do I say this? They're very flat emotionally. There just isn't a lot of joy. There's not a lot of pain. It's just very neutral. But other families, they only want joy and happiness in their house. This is not healthy. It's not healthy. Healthy is sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm, I have grief. Sometimes I'm lonely. Sometimes I have joy. Sometimes I have excitement. All of the above. So please allow your kids to feel their pain. So often I hear parents, they want to shield their kids from their pain. Please don't do that. Because what happens when you're not around and they're older and they have pain? We don't want them reaching for something like alcohol or drugs to numb their pain or some other substance or another way to numb out. There's so many different ways. We do this, we reach for vices when we don't know what to do with our internal pain, our sadness, our grief, our anger, all of these things. If we don't learn how to feel this when we're growing up, it's not a good sign when we become adults because we're going to want to numb it out. So teach your kids how to sit in their pain. Be with them in their pain. Let me explain to you. If your child, let's say, I see this when, um, I remember when my kids were even growing up, like if your kid doesn't make the soccer team or the dance team or whatever, it's okay. Maybe there's something better coming for your child. Maybe they're going to go in a different direction. But what I see are the parents get upset and they go in and they yell at the teacher because they discipline their kid or the coach. No, I get it. Sometimes there are jerks that are teachers or parents, but most of the time, If your kid doesn't make the team, I see these parents, I used to, my kids are older now, but I used to see the parents go in and have a fit because their parents, their kid didn't make the top soccer team or didn't make the dance team or didn't make the whatever. And their kid's home crying about it. Now, it's okay that your kid's home crying about it. Be with your child in their pain. Please be with your child in their pain. Sit there with them and say, I'm so sorry. What do you need from me? Without judging anyone, you don't have to say things like, your coach is such a jerk. You know, they didn't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with them, that they didn't make that team. None of that. Just, I'm so sorry. Is there anything I could do? Would you like a hug? Can I sit here with you in this? Let me be here with you in this. Same thing goes for when we have something that happens like a death in the family or a divorce Be relational with your child. That's what healthy adults do. You're teaching them how to be healthy. If if their grandparent dies or an aunt or an uncle or God forbid anybody dies, let them know, even if they're little kids. You know, so-and-so passed away. And I'm so sorry you're not going to see them again. And if they cry, 
It's okay. And let's talk about you crying. Is it okay if you cry in front of your kids? I've worked with parents or people that have said to me, oh, I never cry in front of my kids. Why not? (laughs) Please feel your emotions and share with your children. This is how you model. It's okay to cry. Doesn't mean they're going to be crybabies. Now, we don't want a kid crying over every single little thing that very, very rarely happens. But we do want them to know it's okay to cry. If you're hurt, whether it's physical or emotional, it's okay. It's okay to be sad. And what we teach them is that emotions flow through them and they're not here forever. Now, if a grandparent dies and you're upset, it's okay. And that crying may come and go. It's not going to be forever. So we want to really demonstrate this for our children. This is what a healthy adult would do. This is what we do from this adult chair. But be there with them in their pain. Key. It's key. It's such a beautiful modeling for them. Number three, we want to seek to understand both sides of the story. As parents, we tend to make a lot of assumptions. If our kids get in a fight or we assume or something happens on the playground or when they're in high school, whatever it might be. We assume who the culprit is. We make assumptions and we get upset. We either assume our kid did something wrong or another kid did something wrong and we're mad at the principal or whatever. Slow down and seek to understand. Seek to understand both sides of the story. Remember, in our adult, we slow down. We gather facts. That's all we're doing here. But we seek to understand the whole situation. We don't cast blame gain information, we get conscious, get the facts, and then we discuss what's going on with our kid and, of course, with whoever else is involved. But we seek to understand both sides of the story, stay out of assumptions. Another thing that we do, number four, is we we want to, like I said above, especially with our kids when they come home and share something with us, we want to respond versus react, Okay. If your kid comes home and they share something with you that makes you angry, I want to give you an example. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Don't scream and yell and get hysterical with your child. Get the facts. Then share with them how you feel. You might need a boundary. You might, and they might need a consequence. I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is be present with with your child. Don't react respond, show them how to do this, model for them. This is what healthy people do. And let me tell you, this has been hard sometimes for me too. I get it, you guys. I'm just telling you, let's make this a goal. I've had the police show up at my house. I was sharing this with my sister the other day, looking at thinking about the times that the police showed up at my house a few times about my kids. I'm like, oh my God, the police are here. What the hell is going on? And immediately I want to react. No, slow it down and respond. Okay, number five, listen well and reflect. This will guide them back to their own truth. This is such an important one as parents. Reflect, reflect, reflect to your kids. Mirror what they're saying. But the key before that we reflect is listen. I call this, if you've taken a workshop with me, we practice this in the workshop. And of course, in the certification, we talk about masterfully listening to other people and we practice. Okay. So I, you might've heard me share this before, but when my kids were in high school, my two boys, specifically when they were in high school, I practiced this all the time and I still do. And I really try to do this with most people. We masterfully listen. I don't try to fix or change anybody. I just listen with presence. And then you reflect back to them what they're saying, but in many words versus whole paragraphs. So my example, of course, was when my son, my my kids would come home and say different things to me. And I would just say, oh, okay. So so so-and-so was drinking last night. Okay. Hmm. They were drinking. Oh, yeah. So-and-so was drinking. You know, they do drugs sometimes too, mom. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. So they do drugs sometimes. And I am just listening. 
no reacting. I'm not saying, oh my God, what were you doing with somebody that was drinking and doing drugs? I don't do that because you know what happens when we react like that? Kids shut down. They shut down. And if you're a parent, you're going to want to be a touchstone. I call us touchstones. We want to be that rock that our kids can always go to. So when we listen and reflect well, what happens is kids begin to feel, and this is what we want when they leave the nest. We want them to tune into their own truth. We want them to connect into that, in, in that intuition that's deep within them. When we are completely directing our kids all the time, telling them what to do, when to do it, getting mad if they're not doing it my way, it takes away from their own intuition. We want them to feel their own intuition so that when they're not with us, they're guided by their own intuition. This is so important, y'all. Really, really important. So number six, let go of who you think your kids should be and who you want them to be. Big one. In order for your kids to become healthy adults, we must let them develop and become whoever it is that they're here to be. We don't know who our kids are here to be. We think we do, but we don't. Remember, Our job is to guide them. Remember the guardrail analogy I've used with you guys many times. You know, by the time they're in high school, especially seniors, they're on like a 20 lane expressway and we're still the guardrails. We got those boundaries, but let them experience life. We're here to mirror what they're, what they're sharing with us. We're guiding them if they want guidance. And by the time they're seniors, they usually don't. So we just allow them to explore and create and become whoever it is that they're here to become in this lifetime. It's such a beautiful unfolding if we can sit back in our adult chair and allow them to become that person. It's really, really beautiful. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's hard. But that's what we want to do. We want these people, these little people that we're raising to be, to become these intuitive, grounded, boundaried adults. That's what we want. Don't you think about it? The kids that can feel their emotions, kids that know who they are, kids that can process and not react and not want to stuff down emotions. That's what being a healthy adult is. So please, it begins with you all as parents. Start with yourself. Let your kids watch you model. You model it for them. And then they become what they witness in the household. So I I can already feel this. I'm going to get emails in that say, what if my husband, my wife, my whomever that's raising my children with me isn't on the same page and they don't practice their adult chair and they are reactive and they don't, and they don't feel their emotions. I say to that, who cares? You be the one that they model. You be the healthy one in that household. You, it starts with you. If you're the one listening today, you start practicing today because when you change the dance in that household, or you will change the net, the dance, I should say, when you become healthy, other people can become healthy too. And maybe the person that you're living with, your partner will also join you in that journey. But, um, I'm going to talk to you guys about that soon because other people have written in, I know about what do you do When the person you're living with, the person you're married to, the person you're dating is not growing like you're growing, is not seeking to be healthy. So that is going to be in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that because I know how difficult that can be, but I've got some ideas for you. Okay. All right. Last thing I want to say is this, because I know what it's like to raise kids and be a parent. I'm going to ask you this, please, please give yourself grace. We are always doing the best that we can because raising kids is hard, really hard. But just keep reaching for your adult and live from the healthiest version that you can be because your kids are watching you. And the healthier that you become, the healthier your kids can become as well. All right, my friends, this has been wonderful. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will be chatting with you very soon. And don't forget, if you want help to get healthy, this is what we're talking about the whole month. I'm a self-care badass in the adult chair membership. I would love to connect with you there. 
we still have, yeah, we still have a lot to do. We still have a few more weeks, so it is not too late. We have a live Q&A next week. So come join us. Love to see you at that's at the adult chair.com forward slash membership. Have a great week. I'll see you guys next week seated right here in the adult chair. <laughs>